So here we go. Um, this is going to be a pretty close to traditional boss fly. And, um, you know, this is one of those patterns that has worked forever. Always will. It's not very fancy. But I got to thinking about it. Um, you know, when I usually carry some. But then you get out of, you get out of, you get out of whack. And sometimes I don't have them. And I was up uh, <clears throat> last week. I gave a little talk up in Astoria to the Rainland Flycasters. Um, and I uh, spent some time with Henry Hoffman. And <clears throat> so here's the point. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I consider myself uh, a seasoned person, seasoned angler, fly tire. I was tying flies commercially in the 60s. Henry was tying commercially in the 50s. So Henry was telling me about how he was tying flies for Paulson's in Portland. He said they were paying him um, a dollar and fifteen cents per dozen for trout flies. I'm trying to figure out whether what where to end that. For trout flies, a dollar and fifteen cents a dozen. And for weighted steelhead flies, dollar thirty a dozen. Henry's been around. It was just it was wonderful to talk with him, visit with him in his home up at, up at Seaside. Um, his wife was doing the crossword puzzle. Henry took me on a tour. Here's a guy, um, probably, well, of course, Henry um, was the person that developed the Hoffman Super Hackle. And I re remember when I was tying commercially in, I uh, used to get my feathers uh, from Doughton Hardware. And uh, we used a lot of India, a lot of Chinese uh, Chinese saddles, India saddles. The Indias were a little bit smaller. Um, but boy, um, when the Hoffman Super Hackle came in, Wayne got a shipment of capes and saddles in the Grizzly. There was nothing like them on the market. And frankly, there isn't to this day. What's happened is that the, the present, you know, like the Whitings, um, yeah, they're super, they're wonderful feathers. They're super, super skinny. And if you're tying super, super skinny, little tiny flies are great. But, you know, if you want to tie eights, tens, twelves, it's much tougher. Anyway, Henry, uh, Henry developed the Hoffman Super Hackle. He, um, the Rainland Fly Casters put together um, just a wonderful book of their fly patterns. And you know, it, it was really interesting. Uh, the demographic of the Fly Club, I couldn't tell you exactly, but I wouldn't be surprised if I was one of the younger guys there at the age of 69. Um, really nice people. Those folks have been around and they have tied some great flies and they have, uh, some of them fish small clousers off the beach, uh, lower Columbia. And uh, they've, they've really kind of been pioneers in a lot of things. One of the gentlemen was telling me about um, a trip. He <coughs> <coughs> hmm, excuse me. A trip he made, he was fishing on the slats <clears throat> and I did not catch the year. And he talked about, um, I think one afternoon he hooked something like 20 summer steelhead. Um, and some of the other guys in the club 
were, were thinking he was exaggerating, but he, at one point he talked about being there on the river and seeing Chinook and Summer Steel had just streaming by going upstream. And you know what? I've seen that too. Now the day that I was there, the river was starting to rise and the fish literally, that, now the Chinook were all dark. This was up in the canyon. Uh, the summer steelhead were streaming right by with the kings. And um, unfortunately, the day I was there, um, I caught one fish and it was a dark Chinook. But um, this gentleman, I think, was telling the truth. If, if I'd been, in, been there, as many fish as there were, if they'd been biting, even I could have caught 20. So here's your traditional boss fly with uh, bead chain eyes. It's a black fox tail, black chenille body. Uh, Henry Hoffman was tying some up when I was there and uh, I'm honored to have a chance to see Henry, spend some time with him. And I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed this.